The S&P 500 was down 46 basis points today, closing at 3385.49. Welcome and thank you for watching. My name is Rodney Constable. I am a former financial advisor, a former vice president of a major mutual fund company, and I am the president and founder of Simple Market Signals at simplemarketsignals.com. Today we will be doing technical analysis on the S&P 500 for Wednesday, September 16th, 2020. And for this analysis, we will be using StockCharts.com. That is the charting service that I use and pay for. And I will leave a link to their site in the description box below this video. This first chart that we're looking at is just today, guys. This is a one-day, one-minute chart of the S&P 500. And you can see what happens when the Federal Reserve speaks. So the Federal Reserve Chair, in this case, Jerome Powell speaks. This is not uncommon, guys. Whenever we're, there's a Fed announcement and the Fed starts to speak, we should expect a lot of volatility. I closely watch these days and I've been doing this for years. And it's really interesting when you look at these one day, one minute charts, anytime the Fed speaks, you get this type of volatility. It's not always to the downside, right? But there's always volatility, or at least Every time I've looked at it, there's always been volatility whenever the Federal Reserve chairperson speaks or they make an announcement about an increase in the Fed funds rate. Well, they've left the Fed funds rate unchanged, and we're probably going to be at you know a very low interest rate for the foreseeable future, probably for at least another year or two, if not longer. But it's oftentimes commentary that causes this type of volatility. So... Uh, that's what we experienced today. And again, we closed down 46 basis points on the S&P 500 at 3385.49. The next chart that we're going to look at is a 15-day, 15-minute chart of the S&P 500. So each candlestick represents 15 minutes of trading. And we know that we hit the all-time closing high on the S&P 500 back on the 2nd of September. We closed at 3580.84. So, so far, that is the all-time closing high in the stock market. And after hitting that all-time high on the 2nd, the market, of course, uh, fell for several days. And we came down to this 3330 level on the S&P 500. We have bounced off of that several times over the last week, week and a half. And then on Friday the 11th, and you can go back and look at my video on Friday the 11th to, uh, to, to see this, but I pointed out that it looked to me like this action right here, where on Friday afternoon we undercut the 3330 level for about an hour and then bounced back above that, and we closed just above 3340 on Friday the 11th. I pointed out in that video that this looked like an intraday reversal to me, and so far that has been the case. Now, what we have is we are trading in a range from 33.30 on the low end to 34.20 on the high end. And you can see that we got just above that 34.20 area for just a, a little while this afternoon. And of course, uh, reversed course and closed at the lows of the day. Again, losing 46 basis points today on the S&P 500. So for now, we find ourselves in a trading range between 33.30 and 34.20. What we need to watch over the next few days or even few weeks is which way this market breaks out because eventually we're going to break out of this sideways trend, right? We've been doing this for about a week and a half so far, but eventually we will break out of this trend. And the question becomes, do we start to get daily closes above 34.20, which would be, of course, a breakout to the upside, letting us know that the stock market is strengthening from here? Or do we continue to roll over here and start to get daily closes beneath the 33.30 level, letting us know that the market is weakening from here? Anybody's guess at this point, guys, nobody knows for sure. We're in, you know, a very weird time of the year where September tends to be the worst month of the year. It's not always like that. But historically, when you add up all, you know, over the last 50 plus years, you add up all the Septembers and look at their average returns. September is statistically the worst month of the year in the stock market. So we have that to contend with. You know, we're less than two months out from a presidential election. There's that uncertainty. Uh, you know, we still don't know what's going to, you know, what the earnings on the S&P are going to look like. We, you know, most companies are not giving guidance. There is so much uncertainty at this point. And of course, human beings and the stock market, right, which is nothing more than human beings trading stocks, hate uncertainty. We as human beings hate uncertainty. So 
to the degree that there's uncertainty in the stock market, there's going to be volatility. And with that volatility, we can go either up or down. None of us know for sure which direction the stock market's going to go over the next few days or a few weeks. What we do know is that we're in a trading range from 3330 to 3420 on the S&P 500. The nice thing about having that data is whichever direction right, we break out, it gives us some clues at least to the short-term trend going forward. So at some point over the next few days or a few weeks, we're going to break out one way or the other, and that will tell us which direction the stock market is heading, at least in the short term.